and Good we thank God for this opportunity um, and that powerful opening prayer. I felt we were having an all night. <laughs> uh, I am not so good in praying for long. <laughs> I, I say small, I'm done. Uh, but our brother did so great. I think almost 10, 15, 20 minutes we were praying. And that was interesting. We want to look at the basics of prayer. The basics, the very basics. And I'm very sure the Lord will help us to understand. Um, as I mentioned on the platform, I don't want to be a lecturer, giving us lectures at this moment. But I want to be a facilitator, helping all of us to grow in understanding and grace as we understand the will of God and the plans of the Lord. As we meet on the first day of our encounter, a question that comes to my mind is, when did prayer start? The when. I think that is very important because if you want to understand any issue, you have to know its origin. So who was the first to pray? And who initiated prayer? And why do we have prayer on earth? I think if that is not clarified enough, we will keep wasting energies and effort and we may be describing prayer as something that is completely different from it. So I picked the Bible and I started reading from Genesis. And I discovered that it was God who started the conversation with man. It's not man who started the conversation with God. And it is interesting to discover that God knew the language of man and talked in a way that man could understand. But in the first few encounters of man and God, man does not respond to God, but man does what God asks him to do. So right in Genesis, in the preparation of paradise in Genesis chapter 2, God would take the man and settle him in the garden of Eden to cultivate and take care of it. And God would give man a command. You are free to eat of all the trees in the garden. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you are not to eat. For the day you eat of it, you are doomed to die. So God does it and go. Man didn't have to respond to this. And man did not ask anything. He only listened and God left and he started eating. And if prayer is about conversation, then it is God who initiated prayer. Because he was the first to talk to man. And when he talked to man, Man only listened and enjoyed what God said. In the second encounter, God discovered that man needed something again. He said it's not good for man to live alone. So he did what he wanted to do, created Eve, and then presented Eve to man. And when God presented Eve to man, man didn't thank God. Interestingly, there was no prayer of thanksgiving. It was not God, I thank you for the garden. And there was no God, I thank you for Eve. No. He only enjoyed everything that kept coming. So you discover that God initiating prayer did not even demand appreciation. But he kept giving, giving, giving as his nature. A man was only conscious of receiving that which God wanted to offer. So prayer became an act of receiving from God the love he has to offer. So that is how I define prayer. The act of receiving from God the love he desires to offer. And if prayer is about receiving from God the love he desires to offer, then how stressful could that be? How burdensome would that be? How worrying should that be? How demanding would that be? So Stepping out of prayer, refusing to pray, is refusing to re receive. One question you may ask before we end today's session is, when did man begin to start asking? When did we start asking? Because it was always receiving. Man never asked in the first and second prayer. Then, there is this interesting element in Genesis chapter 3 verse 8. 
That makes us know the constancy of prayer. Man didn't lack anything. And yet, God was always talking to man. So in Genesis chapter 3 verse 8, we read, The man and his wife heard the sound of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from God among the trees of the garden. But God called to the man, Where are you? So, we discover that it was a habitual something between God and man. He will come, initiate conversation, a man will respond, and at the end, God will vanish again. But this time around, man said, I don't want to pray. And God said, whether you like it or not, I am chasing you. At the end of that encounter, man didn't ask for anything again. You know, I have told you that man has not learned how to ask until this moment. He has not learned how to ask because God has been given and has been given. And in Genesis chapter 3 verse 14, uh, verse 8 to 14, man did not ask. He only reported and complained. So the first human prayer in the Bible was a prayer of complaint. And what was the response and the result? I don't know if somebody can help. If you are shy to mention it, you can type it in the comment section and you read so the first time man opened the mouth to talk to God, it was about a complaint. And we were praying on that. Um, I had, I was naked, so I hid. So that was the first thing. Who told you were naked? I've not eaten the tree. It was the woman you put with me. She gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. So that was man's first prayer. It's not my fault. It's the woman who did it. And what was the result of that prayer? Nobody is typing for me and nobody is answering. Or somebody has opened the mic to answer for us. What was the response of that beautiful prayer? Hey. Hello, family. <laughs> we have active listeners, not active speakers today. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's what? Uh, the question again is uh, the effect, the impact, the resource, yes. The results of the first prayer of man. Well, I said the first prayer of man was to complain. Was to complain that God has given Eve as a baton. What was the response of that prayer? The question and what the answer? Are they the punishment that followed? Are you answering or asking? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the punishment. That's what, yeah. okay. So, Brother Condor thinks it was the punishment. What do you also think? But well, that's the first prayer in the Bible. It's the very first time we, we, we encounter prayer in the Bible. And I'm very sure many of you didn't know that that is where prayer started. And that is why the confusion is setting in on the group. So at the end, God did not take the if he gave to Adam. If has been seen by Adam as a burden, a source of problem, and the cause of his downfall. You remember I mentioned the fact that when God gave Eve to Adam, there was no appreciation. Man didn't express thanksgiving. And the first time he talks about the gift to God is to complain that the gift is not perfect. And God responded by saying, whether the gift is perfect or not, it is your gift. You got to learn, you have to learn how to live with the gift. And I am very sure that Adam will learn how to live with the gift. And that is why it will be the last time the first and the last time Adam will talk evil about Eve. And you know that right after that encounter in the reception of punishment, the man called her Eve because she was the mother of all those who live. And the name Eve, Hawa, just means to live. 
Because to live in Hebrew means Hava or Hawa. So have you seen what Adam is beginning to do? He begins to appreciate God's gift by giving it a good name. So we have not even explained what prayer is. But what I want us to understand straight up from the beginning is that if you don't appreciate the gifts of God, you will begin to ask for them. So those who learn to appreciate never request. I'm repeating that. Those who are deeply inclined to prayer of worship and appreciation and they thank God and value the gifts God gives them are never sent to the level where they begin to plead for things. So, Kondra, remember I once told you that I found it so difficult to in, uh, do an uh, intercession. If I'm praying for people, I'm not worried, but I find it difficult to ask things for myself. Because I don't know what to ask. <laughs> when you give God your lifetime, He takes care of you and He never lets you lack. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And we know that Sheep don't grow grass. And sheep don't look for her grasses. It's the role of the shepherd. So those who learn to appreciate always follow to the green pastures. They don't lack. So from the beginning of the Bible, prayer had nothing to do with petition. Because God was giving on daily basis to Adam. Adam was not appreciating it. And because Adam was not appreciating, the first time he did evaluation, he saw evil on the gift. Then right at the punishment, Adam started seeing goodness in the gift. And when Adam saw goodness in the gift, he got Cain and Abel, Abel, extra goodness. He will get set another goodness. And isn't it strange that when even Cain will kill Abel, Adam will not complain. Or you have not realized that after the death of Cain, Adam didn't complain. And Eve did not complain. So, he complained once and discovered that an attitude of complaint makes you forfeit the goodness you have. After complaining about just Eve, he lost the garden. So, he didn't know what would happen if he complains a second time. What will I lose again? So some of us will begin to look at our lifestyles. If it looks as if you are losing everything, you are losing your business, you are losing everything you do, you are losing your husband, your wife, you are losing your peace, you are losing your happiness, you are losing anything possible you know, check your complaints. Maybe I may not be a right theologian, but permit me to say, that complaining is a demonic act of distraction. To complain and lament is to destroy what you are possessing. And we should be cautious of that as believers. So that we don't lose the precious gifts God intends to give us. Amen. Amen. Are we in the house? Yes, and are we talking about prayer? <laughs> <laughs> or it doesn't sound like prayer yet? Sounds like prayer. prayer. So that is it. Um, do you remember that Abraham never complained about his state of life until God started provoking him? And if I go provoke, he didn't complain. He, he only requests, he asks questions. How possible is it? How possible is it? So, looking at this, you discover that prayer of petition is not the first form of prayer in the Bible. And you remember Cain and Abel. They went to offer thanksgiving. And there is a mystery here. Let me try to explain. Cain was the firstborn. 
He offered thanksgiving and it was not proper. Why? He had never seen Adam and Eve offering thanksgiving. So when he tried, he failed. No, as a firstborn, he didn't he couldn't imitate the younger boy and the Kirchley way of praying. And interestingly, when you read the story of Cain and Abel, um, I pray the Lord will review a lot of things to us today. Um, he says, Time passed, and Cain brought some of the products of the soil as an offering for Yahweh. While Abel, for his part, brought the firstborn of his flock and some of their facts as well. So who initiated Thanksgiving? The elderly son. The God asked them, no. Was it acceptable? The Bible didn't say no. God accepted it, but was not pleased. <laughs> and I think the two of them are not the same. I can accept your gift and not like it. So every task giving is acceptable, but not all task giving are please pleasant. I, I, I hope you are getting the lines. It was acceptable, but it was not pleasant. And Cain was so worried. Why? He has discovered that his mother and father were under curse, but they have been able to give birth to two. And the third was even on the way coming. Why? Adam has learned to appreciate God's gift by giving a good name to the woman, if And I saw if means to live. Um, it's from uh, Hawa. And Hawa means the ability to live or to live. The act of living is Hawa. And Cain tries and it doesn't work. And Abel discovers the mistake of Cain and corrects it. And his prayer finds favor. What am I drawing attention to? Prayer is a learned act. It's something we can learn. It takes somebody to initiate. And when a person initiates and it doesn't work out, we learn. So that ours will work out for us. So when I listen to somebody praying, I will look at the impact of the person's prayer in the person's life. If the impact is positive, then I may learn how the person prayed and make it my pattern. If it is not too much, I will advise myself. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so, enough of Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel. We are still looking at the journey of prayer in the Bible. That's why I've taken Genesis. Possibly, I may not even get, quite, get to the Isaac, Jacob, and Esau story. I was so much in tools and love about that. I even posted a, 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 a gist of them on the platform. You know, the next person who prayed or had an encounter with God is Enoch. And I hope you know the story of Enoch. I think he has just one sentence. Enoch was 65 years old and he fathered Methuselah. Enoch walked with God. How? We are not told. After the birth of Methuselah, Enoch lived for 300 years and he fathered sons and daughters. You know, Enoch lived for 365 years. Enoch walked with God, then was no more because God took him. And Enoch is, uh, from a commentary I read, is distinguished from the other patriarchs in several ways. His life is shorter, but his years number those of the days in the solar year. I hope you have checked that. Or I should go back and read enough for you to get it. Genesis chapter 5. Yes, please. Pick your Bibles. Genesis chapter 5, verse 22. Check. Somebody should read for us. How many years was Enoch before he died? Check straight away and read it loud. Genesis 5, verse 22. I don't think I'm the only one with Bible on the platform. <laughs> Genesis 5, 22. Yes. Enoch walked with God after the birth of Methuselah 300 years. 
had other sons and daughters. Good. Move. Good. That's all the days of Enoch were 364 years. Check. How many days do you have in a year? <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> me, why? Sister me. I want to know your wow. Tell me something. Yes, dear. Uh, you said? <laughs> so you discover that Enoch walked with God. And he said, anyway, if you check all the patrons from Genesis chapter 1 to chapter 12, he is the shortest lived one. He is the one who didn't live for long. Cry. But his yeah. life, yes, he's the youngest among all the patrons. But his life is so remarkable that his years becomes our solar year. That tells you the solar year is too short. So if you want to work with God, it should not be too difficult. And, and when you work with God, people will no more recognize where you are. And transporting the inner story to us, I have told you that prayer, properly said, is valuing and appreciating what God brings. And I told you, when you learn to appreciate what God brings, you never ask for anything. And with the life of Enoch, we discover that when we begin to appreciate what God brings and begins to thank God for all that he brings, we will discover that life is too short but very enjoyable. So people are enduring the year, but you'll be enjoying it. You should be enjoying life, not enduring life. So Enoch creates another AD. Because the word AD means the presence of God. So outside the AD Adam and Eve lost, Enoch enjoyed another AD. And that is why Enoch was offered eternity. So man was banned from entering the garden of AD. But Enoch entered it because he walked with God. In a sense, when you begin to pray, physical life is no relevant. But your life never ends. Is it, is it another, 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 another something worth repeating? Enoch has no end of life. Enoch has no end of life. But in the cursed environment, he had a very short time. You remember God said, I have cursed the earth in Genesis chapter 3. So the more you lived, the more you endured the curse. So in a sense, shorter life was an exit from the curse. This Old Testament, too, when we come to New Testament, there will be something different about death. Because when I begin to talk at this and you are not careful, you start loving death. So Enoch, <laughs> Enoch didn't live much on the curse environment. And the longer years he lived in the curse environment was 365 days. A uh, year, 365 years. Corresponding to our days in the solar calendar. So he attained a perfect age, walking with the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And I hope you know that the second person who walked with the Lord. I'm talking about prayer, but you're looking at this so that you will take prayer very seriously. Do you remember the second person who the Bible gives a testimony as walking with God? You don't remember? Let's read Genesis 6 9. Let's read Genesis 6 9. If you open, you can read. Genesis chapter 6, verse 9. Genesis 6 9. Yes, Genesis 6 9. These are the descendants of Noah. Yes. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. Hallelujah. Amen. And when God saw that Noah deserves a land without case, he destroyed all other people and gave the land to him alone. <laughs> <laughs> 
from Enoch. God took Enoch away and led the land to those who were enduring curse. For Noah, God destroyed all the others who were enduring the curse and left Noah alone to enjoy a proper land. So from Noah, we are no more on the curse land. Because the curse land was destroyed by the flood. But are you conscious that the land you are living in is not a curse land but a blessed land? In fact, this is my very first time. I've not even thought of it. <laughs> yeah. Because I hope you remember the story of Noah, the end of the story of Noah. Um, after Noah has come out of the ark, in Genesis chapter 8, verse 15. Noah came out of the land, blah, 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 blah. Build an altar. Verse 20, he will build an altar. 21. Start reading from 21. Compare, we will compare it with Genesis chapter 4. The sacrifice of Abel. Genesis 8, verse 21. Genesis 8, 21. Okay. Mm -hmm. Genesis 8, Genesis 8 21. Yes. When the Lord smelled the pleasing odor, the Lord said in his heart, so I will you, never again mm -hmm. the ground. I will never again because of you. I will never again do what? Curse, curse the curse earth. Now in Genesis chapter 3, God said, Curse be the land. Okay. And that land was destroyed in a flood. And Genesis 8, he said, I will never curse the land again. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm now giving the secret of blessings. Because many of us still think that the earth is cursed, that is why the earth is not blessing us. Mm -hmm. Because I'm very sure, I'm very sure, 99% of us on the platform has always believed that we are on a cursed environment. Mm -hmm. When you see a kind of, you can't see. <laughs> you, you, you said what? What's it like? I'm not sure. It's interesting. Yes, you are being, you are kind of, you are kind of, you are kind of, You've been reading Genesis 1. Mm -hmm. Then he said, I will never curse the land. Continue a little. There's more blessings. Continue a little. I will never again curse the land. I will never again curse the land. Because of humankind. Because of human beings. For the inclination of the human heart is evil from youth. Both. Nor will I ever again destroy every living creature as I do that. Both. As long as... As long as mm -hmm. the earth endures, good. Sea time and harvest, good. Cold and heat, good. Summer and wind, good. Day and night, good. Shall not cease. Hallelujah. So, if this was the case, if this was the case, why was there hunger in the time of Joseph in Egypt for seven years? So God no more curses the land, but we can curse it. That is why in Revelation chapter 12, the angel said, So this is one beautiful thing about prayer. When you begin to encounter God in prayer, you possess that power. We can nullify curses. Because if God curses, who can destroy it? <laughs> that is why Jesus will say everything you ask for will be done on this earth. Because the earth will respond to you positively. Amen. The earth will possibly respond to you. So we are looking at prayer and we are looking at the second person who prayed, Noah, uh, um, Enoch. And even 
Comparing Genesis chapter 4 to this story of Noah. In Genesis chapter 4, God smelled the scent and it became present to God. In Genesis chapter 8, the smell was already present before God saw it. So now man has learned how to prepare a pleasant smell. Because example has been given. What I mean is that we cannot fail to give a less qualitative worship and expect breakthrough. Because people have done it over and over again and we know that which works. At least we have a lot of examples. The Paul and the Silas's own, the Peter's own, the Noah's own, the ancient David's own. So we can't fail. We can't fail. We can't fail. No, we can't fail. And then Elijah will also be another person who walks with God and will also vanish. Mysteriously. And we are told that it is their act of piety that made them endure forever. It's their act of piety. The, the, the heart that is able to see God as God. So I, I have already given um, an acronym for prayer. And I want to give that acronym. Then I will come back to the Genesis. Well, we are looking at the Genesis of prayer. The start of prayer. How prayer started. And this is how I define prayer. I, the acronym P R A Y E R. The first P is plan. Plan. To pray is to plan. The plan. I was say, what is shiny, man? So prayer is not something you do haphazardly. It's not a spontaneous something. It's not something of the blue. It's something we plan. Then R, relax. Relax. The woman on the platform. If you are stressed and you are under pressure and agitating, can you prepare a beautiful food? Ladies, under stress, can you prepare food that is beautiful? So, don't... Ladies, we are, we are I've heard a small no from the mouth of Sister Me. The other ladies, the other ladies, maybe they don't, they don't, they don't prepare food. <laughs> <laughs> they only eat takeaway. Ah, they, they, they only take uh, eat takeaway. Ah, so that is it. <laughs> so you need to relax. No, who be born pious on the Kuntoka? Some people pray as if they are fighting God. Oh, you have not seen them before. You know, aggressive prayer, I will explain it one day. Aggressive prayer has nothing to do with aggressive ways. Because when in 2 Kings chapter 1 and chapter 2, Elijah sat on the mountain and said, If I am a man of God, may fire come and consume you and your 50. He was sitting and relaxed, but the fire came to consume them. Was that not aggressive prayer? Yeah. When Moses sat on the mountain holding the uh, rod in his two arms in quiet and silence, and Israel was killing the enemies, was it not aggressive prayer? When David went to Goliath, uttered a few words and threw the uh, stone in the catapult and killed Goliath, was it not a result of aggressive prayer? Oh. When Samson heard the two pillars in the camp of the enemy and as the Lord gave him strength once again and he shook the pillars and all of them died, was that not aggressive prayer? But how aggressive were their ways? So aggressive prayer has nothing to do with aggressive ways. It is an aggressive heart. An aggressive mind. Praying with simple ways. That makes prayer aggressive. So I said we have to relax. So P is plan. R is relax. Then A anticipate the response. 
Anticipate. Okay. Yes. Before you even ask God, be expectant. Because when you are coming to me for loan, and you don't think you get a loan, you will start the steps. So it's not a trial and error event. If I want a pen and I look at you and I want to borrow your pen, and I am not sure I'll get a pen from you, I don't ask the first place. So if you are not ready for answer, don't pray. That is why Isaac didn't like the prayer he said for Jacob. But the prayer worked. <laughs> or oh, you don't remember. Isaac blessed Jacob reluctantly, not from his heart. Because he meant the prayer for Esau. But the prayer worked. Because a planned and relaxed man anticipated that what I am uttering will happen. It was uttered on the wrong person. But the results came. Amen. Um, I hope I'm not destroying your prayer habit. I want us to pray proper. I, 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 my desire is that at the end of this one hour or so discussion, we should be praying properly. Oh, we should be praying properly. Praying properly. Because you have been praying anyhow. So we have to anticipate the response. Why? Yield to the one you are requesting from. When I ask you for money, and you enter your room, and I'm not patient enough to wait for your return, then I'm not ready for the money. Throw of us. You irritate your helper if you repeat a request whose answer is on the way. So after anticipating the response I have asked for, I should be expectant, Wait, uh, yield to his will. I should yield. I know he will do it, so I surrender. I don't look for any other alternative. Because I know God will be the answer. I don't look for alternatives. Amen. Then ye, you embrace. You embrace. Not the intention, but the one who is bringing the intention. And embrace here means love. Enjoying his presence. So you can even, you can even say enjoying the presence of the one whom you ask for. We all say, Ubu Samadhi and I'm here or here. I don't know how to say that in English. Sam, who you were here? Unya, the open. Can you help us? Because I don't know the English. So, how to enjoy the companionship of the one you have planned, relaxed, and anticipated and yielded to? And finally, you must relate with God. Relate. Relationship is very important. You remember the elder son of the prodigal, uh, the, 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 the loving father? The elder son of the prodigal son. The elder brother of the prodigal son. He was staying home. Access to all the answers. But he never related to the father. And because there was no relationship, he didn't discover that the prayer has been answered. He was desiring for a goat, but it was already offered. But the father told him, all that I have is yours. All that I have is yours. But because there was no relationship, many of you, eh, your prayers have been answered, but because you have no relationship with God, you are still begging for the same things again. The prayers were answered five years ago. Obia warrior, nyami etcha, esta se o chak, yin yangu po yin drum na yangu po di chak wedi riches no. Was so super for years ni, but I'm not going to because who need relationship with who need answer. 
unless you learn to relate, you won't discover the answer. Because when you are actually related with God, he always comes with another gift. And he will be bringing the things, ah, it will get to a time, you will be like, hey, make cry, me digu him, how am I putting them? It is receiving without end. For those who relate, prayer is a reception without end. An unending accumulation of divine graces. So, this is why I want to pinch our discussion to today. At least I plan to begin exposing the origins of prayer and I plan to talk about prayer as a plan, a realization, an anticipation, yielding, enjoying or embracing and then relating with God. And when that is properly done, you won't be begging for things. You'll be begging for time to spend more time with Him. And if there was no revelation, at least you discover that if you walk with God, life becomes easy. And what God does is that He either takes the curse people away from your life, or you take you away from the curse. So in the case of Enoch, He took him away from the curse environment. In the case of Noah, He will take away all the curse people and give him a well prepared environment. And that is what prayer does. May God bless us as we enter into the moment of questions. Amen. Amen. So we are running away from TikTok. Those on TikTok, I am running away. Stay blessed. Zoom, question time.